Today's topic is creating savvy spreadsheets that work better for you. Uh, so as a professor in Ag and Biological Engineering, I've taught some content like this uh, literally for a few decades now. Uh, and I found that uh, taking a logical approach toward generating spreadsheets helps novices and those that would say they are really good at spreadsheeting and helps them to be more effective. One of the goals for today is to move you toward thinking like a programmer. When you think about the data pipeline, since this is part of the digging into the data pipeline webinar series, things have to have to happen to data in a very sequential way. And so by doing some spreadsheeting in that logical, one thing depends on another, which then influences another, um, it's a good way to think about dealing with data. Uh, a lot of emphasis here on thinking about the spreadsheets as a tool. It's a tool to help you make a decision, to help you wrangle data. And so one of the things we'll do today is generate a useful tool, and then I'll also introduce uh, some other tools that we have made available for you. So the outline of today is to first give you a little bit of prerequisite knowledge and some spreadsheet warnings. We'll spend a good chunk of the time actually doing a demonstration first in Excel and then with a little bit of a view from Google Sheets as well. So we'll deal with formulas in this time-tested, value-proven format. Uh, and then at the end, we'll look at a slicker version of that same tool that you'll see developed right before your very eyes. But first, a little bit about logical spreadsheeting. Probably all of you that are watching this and participating today uh, read in English. And when you think about the English language, we read from left to right and top to bottom. So if that's our natural way of doing things, let's compute that way. Let's gather all of the inputs that we're gonna then need to, to know in order to calculate other things. Let's have them be at the top. Let's have them be sort of on the left. Our calculations will flow top to bottom like English reads from top to bottom. It makes for a, a boring spreadsheet to audit because there's no spaghetti flow of things going from one place and up and to the left and then over and down to the right. No, all these spreadsheets are going to flow very straightforwardly, top to bottom. Uh, I would encourage to, you to fight the urge to hide things. I've downloaded countless uh, spreadsheets from the internet where there are hidden cells or sheets that you can't see because they're protected data somewhere. Uh, my encouragement is just let it all be in the open. Let uh, people see how things are being calculated. And uh, the beautiful thing is that the bottom line is, well, it's at the bottom. So let's also think about uh, when we identify people, places, and things, we do it by names. So in that vein, rather than referring to cell references like E44, J30, etc., especially C4, because that's also an explosive, let's call things uh, like P for power, or T for torque, or N for the amount of nitrogen in a particular fertilizer, etc. That will result in your spreadsheets being more readable, much more easier to audit, and then you can also learn from it because they're educational as well. And then you'll also see me echo formulas in the sheet itself so that the user, even if it's you, have, your, have an improved understanding of what you're looking at. And then in upcoming weeks, we won't have time to do it today, but in future weeks, we'll extend that to add some of the intrinsic or built-in functions in spreadsheets. I will also add some forms and data validation to make them a little bit more user-friendly and protection to keep users from making accidental changes. So first, the prerequisite. When you do spreadsheeting, whether you're going to use cell references like B9 and C22, or you use names like P and N, you're doing algebra. So you must be a little bit ready for algebra. When you put formulas in spreadsheets, you're actually doing coding, and code does exactly what to, what you tell it to do. It doesn't do any more than that, doesn't do any less than that. It does it without judgment. So if you tell it to do the wrong thing, you're going to get the wrong thing, which leads me to say this. With the spreadsheet, you can now make errors faster than you ever made them before. So make sure that you don't have errors. And one of my favorite uh, little poems goes something like this. You may spreadsheet in columns, you may spreadsheet in rows, but regardless of how you spreadsheet, it grows and grows and grows. So I think once you get doing this, you're gonna see that oh, I can add this other feature. I could improve another decision if I just extended this spreadsheet just a little bit more. So it is. it does become a powerful platform for making tools. So this won't be glitzy. 
uh, but would you rather read some text and study some static images and look at menu structures of software or would you rather just see it done and I'm thinking it's see it done so we will just do it here we go but first a little problem let's think about sim simple fertilizer math if we're going to put nutrients on the land uh, we know the concentration of the fertilizer in percent of the nutrient we put on so many pounds per acre it has a certain price so let's use the units as our friend so what if I had 130 pounds of anhydrous ammonia that's 8200 and the price is $400 a ton well if I put on 130 pounds of that at 82 pounds 0.82 pounds of N per pound of fertilizer then I'm going to get 107 pounds of N per acre with regard to price I take 130 pounds per acre times $400 a ton if I stop there I'm going to have units of dollar pound per ton acre uh, I need to cancel units so I multiply by one divided by 2,000 one ton per 2,000 pounds and I get $26 an acre to put that anhydrous ammonia on so what if I also had some starter fertilizer the math is the same just different numbers and then if you combine them I have 107 pounds of N from anhydrous I have nine pounds of N from the starter fertilizer that's 116 total and then you know add up the prices you get $37 per acre as a total so get ready for some magic got a little very simple animation in my PowerPoint here let's suppose I wave the magic wand and I take those numbers the 130 the 400 etc and I replace them with variable names like R1 for the rate of fertilizer 1 PR1 for the price of fertilizer 1 R2 for the rate of fertilizer 2 etc now you see this actually is algebra but it's pretty straightforward and simple algebra so let's just do it let's go to the open road when I see a spreadsheet like this it, to me it's like the Audubon like fire up let's go it's like the highways in west central US where the speed limit is higher just a reminder that each one of these cells a, an intersection of a column and a row for example E10 could contain text could it contain a number could contain a formula could contain hyperlinks and could contain some comments or notes any one of those things and then I could also put pictures on it too if I wanted but uh, we'll stop there and these are the things that we could put on it welcome to the open road uh, so you'll notice I have here a little text box it has my outline so I make sure I cover things in the right order uh, but first a reminder formulas in Excel always start with an equal sign anything that starts with not an equal sign will not be a formula I also want to point out this little tool here if I hover over that you'll see that it says insert function it's a little function wizard and we won't necessarily need it today but if we were using the built-in or intrinsic functions like VLOOKUP, payment, present value, uh, some trig functions, things like that, that little function wizard is great, even if you're not a novice, because it helps you know wh what the arguments to the function are. It takes care of putting the commas in the right places and things like that. Uh, okay, so let's do this like English, top to bottom, left to right. We're going to use names. Uh, and during this process, you're going to see me make an error or two. Uh, sometimes I do it on purpose. Sometimes it's accidental. You'll have to decide whether that was on purpose or not. So without further ado, I'm going to label my columns. Abbreviation, description, and the value, the units, and the documentation. Oops, can't spell there. And then we'll start with the inputs all at the top. And so if we're going to do that little fertilizer problem that we uh, talked about already, then I'm going to have a, a nitrogen concentration in fertilizer one. I'm just going to abbreviate FERT1 because you're going to see I'm going to type this a lot of times and it will just be quicker. So that's the nitrogen of fertilizer one. If it's anhydrous ammonia, it will be 82. The units will be percent. And then I have a, a phosphorus of fertilizer one, but I'm probably thinking of it as P2O5 of fertilizer one. If it's anhydrous, it's zero, it's still a percent. And I've got a K of fertilizer one. By the way, why don't I just put in K1 without that silly underscore? 
you can ponder that a little bit. Maybe put your answer in chat why that is not a good idea, K1. Uh, but I'm going to keep doing this while you're thinking about that. We probably think of that in terms of K2O. And in anhydrous, there isn't any. Uh, I've also got a rate of fertilizer 1. And so that's going to be in pounds per acre. Uh, maybe we put in 130 there. And then a, P, a price of fertilizer 1. Notice I can't use P underscore 1 because I already used that. Uh, but I can use PR for price of fertilizer one. And uh, what do we have in there? 400. And that's uh, dollars per ton. Okay, so that's a little bit tedious. Uh, you may not know all of these shortcuts, and for you they can come later. But I know them, so I'm going to apply them. Realizing that I need to do the same thing for maybe a couple more fertilizers, I'm going to copy that whole range. And I can either right-click, paste, or the shortcut is Control V. So I Control C to copy or right click copy. I can Control V, paste. I'm actually going to do it one more time. And then let's do another thing. I'm going to use another shortcut that I know because I don't want two, uh, three fertilizer ones. I want fertilizer one and I want the next part to be fertilizer two. So while highlighting that, there is a shortcut under the edit menu that search and replace over here is where it is in the long hand. The shortcut is control H. I can replace every one with a two. So it's going to, well I'll just show you. Let's replace them all. But it, it's for the region that I have highlighted, not in the whole sheet. So let's replace them. It made 10 replacements. That was quick order in order to get that to be number two. Now let's do this one for the three. I can control H, replace all the ones with a three, replace them all. And do you see, did it work perfectly or not quite perfectly? It looks okay. So we've got fertilizer one, two, and three. So let's let the second fertilizer be 18, 46, oh. So I'll put 50 pounds per acre on and a price of 444. That probably isn't a very good price, but it's just the number I have we're working with today. Now, notice I didn't put the units there, so I'm being kind of careless. Well, I'll just copy those units. They're all the same. And then I'll do it again. So notice one thing that I'm doing here in this spreadsheet is also keeping things all in the same order. Like once you've done one fertilizer, you know exactly what to do with the third, second one and the third one. Okay, so let's let the third fertilizer maybe be 0, 0, 60. Uh, so it's potash. Uh, we're not going to put any on. And uh, I don't know of a good price, but maybe it's $300 a ton. I'll go with that. So I've got the input section uh, of all the description of the fertilizers. Now let's do the outputs. And so one of the outputs is going to be the total amount of N applied. And that's going to be in pounds per pounds n per acre. I'll have total p applied, and that's going to be pounds p two o five per acre. And then the same thing. And then in the end, I also want to know the cost of my fertilizer. And that's going to be in dollars per acre, which is going to be the combination of all three combined. So did you know also that this width little beast up here in the, uh, in the separator between columns, if you just double click it, it will automatically format it to fit, which is kind of a nice quick feature. So notice that I did this. I set up the structure of the spreadsheet, and I actually haven't done any math at all. I just fully understood what are the inputs that I have, what are the outputs that I want. I thought about the units because sometimes that helps me do the math, but I haven't actually typed in any formulas. And that's usually how I would go about this sort of a sheet. Now, here's where the power comes in. Instead of referring to the nitrogen of fertilizer one as C3, I want to call it 
n underscore 1. So that requires that I do some naming. Now, did you get the answer of why I shouldn't call row 5 <coughs> k1? Here's the reason. There is a cell over here that has the cell reference k1. So maybe you'll remember a TV show uh, back in the day where there was uh, a fellow and he had a brother, Daryl, and he had another brother, Daryl. Well, if we had two cells named K1, Excel would get all confused and probably use the wrong one. So that's why these need to have a little underscore, because there is a cell N1 here. There's a cell P1 here. There's a cell K1 here. Actually, there's a cell R1 over just barely off the screen. There is another cell PR1 way over to the right. So that's why I need to choose these names wisely. All right, so here's the trick in Excel. You can highlight the whole sheet and do this, but it's a little bit tighter and tidier. If I just highlight the rows where I have variable names and values, and in the ribbon, I'm gonna to go to formulas, to the name manager, in this area, in the middle, there's a create from selection. And what I'm gonna do is use the left column. I'm telling Excel that whenever I would refer to any row in any column, I want to, it to find its name in the left column here, which is column A. This is why the left to right, top to bottom works. So very quickly, I can just hit OK. And then from this point on, any value in row 3 within the column it will think of row three as being n underscore one. So let's go use it. So now the total amount of nitrogen applied is equal to, well, I'm gonna take the nitrogen of cell one, of fertilizer one, times the rate of fertilizer one, plus the nitrogen of fertilizer two, times the rate of fertilizer two, plus the nitrogen of fertilizer three, times the rate of fertilizer three. Is that a little easier to read than C3 times C6 plus C8 times C11 plus C13 times C16? I think so, and I hope you agree. Now, if I stop right there, I've taken a percent times a number. That's going to be a wrong answer. I need to divide by 100, so I'm going to put brackets around the whole thing and divide by 100, and I should get... Oh, hashtag spill exclamation point. It's one of the errors I don't like. It's good that I'm getting it because some of you will get it, some of you will not get it. On this computer that I'm using today, it's a different version of Excel. It's the newer version, actually. And so to get rid of that hashtag spill error, I must put a at sign in front of those variable names. We won't get into Excel theory, which is, well, why do you need that? Uh, the first time I uncovered that was actually with some students, and we just had to Google until we found the answer, and that is the solution of what to do. So you don't always need to do that. It depends on which version of software you get. It's that hashtag spill error that causes the need. So now I get an answer. That's how many pounds of nitrogen I would put on in that case. All right, so let's do another one. If I want to do uh, phosphorus, let's see, I put, I now know about the parentheses, so I'll start there. So I want the phos phosphorus uh, one times a rate of one plus phosphorus two times a rate two plus phosphorus of three times a rate of three divided by a hundred. How about that? Does it look right? Yep. Uh, oops. Hashtag spill, I forgot my at signs. Oh, crazy me. Oh, this is interesting. I think I mistyped there. I actually did put P1. So what's it going to fetch? Notice when my cursor is there and I'm editing that cell, it's highlighting that it's looking over here to get P1. That's not what I wanted. This one is what I wanted. So I need that underscore back in there. All right, so there is the advantage of when you're constructing your spreadsheets. Put the cursor on the cell that you work that you want to audit. Hit the F2 or go to the formula bar and edit it, and it will show where is it getting 
the inputs that go into that particular cell. All right, so that looks good. Now, I won't take time to uh, type the formulas for these two because at this point, I think you know how to do it. But let me show you another feature and trick. Let's copy from those two cells in rows 19 and 20, and I'm going to paste them in column E. But while highlighting them in column E, I'm going to do that search and replace trick. I'm going to replace not the one with a three, but I'm going to replace the equal sign with a single quote and an equal sign. What is that going to do to the formulas in column E? Remember that every formula starts with an equal sign. So if I change what's in that cell to not start with an equal sign, it's no longer going to be a formula. So it made two replacements. I'll go ahead and fix my column width here. And you'll notice now we have shown as an echo, so to speak, the formula is over here that's describing the calculation that's going on over here. Now, of course, if you have the actual spreadsheet, you can put your cursor on a cell, go up to the formula bar and see it. But if you want to see another one, you have to move it. The advantage of this is I can now quickly compare, did I do it in the same way? I can look at the, the whole of the spreadsheet and read these because these are not C8 times C9, etc. I can see that I took the nitrogen of one times the rate of one plus etc. And it reads like math that you would write or a good high school algebra student would write. All right, so this is the top down, left to right, fully documented spreadsheet that on the day that I generated it, of course, I knew what I was talking about. But on a different day, I will still know what I meant because it's fully documented. I argue that I could give this spreadsheet to anyone who knew a lick about fertilizer or knew a lick about spreadsheets, and they would know exactly what to do. There's no confusion of where do I put the price of my number two fertilizer. It's very explicit and clear. It's very explicit and clear where are the calculations, where are the results of this thing coming up. All right, so that uh, auditing, you sit there and you edit that cell, that's important. Another thing that's interesting to do is to put the cursor on a cell and go into the formula auditing, which is on the formula ribbon, where there is this idea of tracing precedence or dependence. Now, here's a little warning. It's going to be really boring. Here's the formula for the total phosphorus supply. If I take, uh, trace the precedence, you're going to see that into that formula, this, 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 and this go into it. And so that little tool of, of uh, tracing the precedence or tracing the dependence is very handy to sort of trace is are the calculations flowing like I want them to flow. And if you follow this sort of a format, it's always boring because they go straight down. But that actually is a beautiful thing. So let's remove the errors. All right, so there is in part, here is the whole thing done. So I finished up with the other two cells filled, did that ahead of time. But I want to show you how to make a side-by-side -side scenario. So here I have a scenario one. If I right click on that column D and copy it, go right to the same place, right click, insert copied cells. What the heck, let's just do it again. Right click, copy, right click, insert copied cells. Now I have, I'll go ahead and change the cell width so it looks better. I have three scenarios. I guess I better rename these now. Can't have three scenario ones. It's like two brothers named Daryl. Now I have side-by-side -side scenarios, one, two, and three. I didn't have to think through the math ever again. I only did it once. But now I can do side-by-side -side scenarios. Well, what if instead of 30 pounds an acre, I put on 50 pounds an acre? What effect does that have on my cost and the nutrients? So there is a quick way to sort of do the math again there. Now, I just want to show you another one. We'll make this one available. This one is a little bit slicker. It uses some data validation and uh, what's called the VLOOKUP function in Excel. Uh, but on this one, you can, instead of typing in the, the makeup of your uh, fertilizer, you can actually just click on a selection button, use data validation to choose your fertilizer, enter in the rate. And then separately, there is a table down here for the prices. 
And so that makes it much more compact because here now I've got four different combinations instead of, on this case, we, you know, we had three scenarios. This is really like four different scenarios in a very compact little tool uh, where you choose a fertilizer, give it a rate. Down here you had pre-populated some prices and then you can get the total contributions to the land, etc. Now let's switch and let me show you some of the differences between Excel and Google Sheets. I'm going to go to my browser where I have my Google Drive opened up. One of the things you can do with a spreadsheet from Excel is upload it to your Google Drive. So let's do that. Let me fetch that sheet called FertCalc XLSX. It's an Excel file. I'm going to upload it to Google Drive. Gave it a slightly different name because I had a similar name before. Now I can double click that one and I have the choice to either uh, can I open it with Google Sheets. Of course I could go back and download it, share it with someone, but I'm going to open what is currently an Excel file actually with Google Sheets. So I accessed it from Drive, but you'll now see that I'm actually in Google Sheets here in a second looking at the same thing that I generated in Excel but it's going to be fully functional and identical in Google Sheets. This particular one is identical because I didn't use any uh, complicated or powerful features of Excel. All of the features that I used are compatible with Google Sheets. So a lesson to be learned in this case is that you may get a spreadsheet from somewhere, but you don't actually have Excel. You can always try to open it with Google Sheets and maybe you'll just get lucky and be able to do it for free. So just to prove it here, here is the sheet that I generated in that live demonstration. Here is the bulky version, if you remember. I had made a couple copies and called them scenario one, two, and three. And then here is the same, the uh, slicker version with the data validation. So you choose your fertilizer from a list and then it looks up the prices over here. So that's one way to use an Excel spreadsheet in Google Drive. Another way is to import your spread Excel spreadsheet into a Google Sheet. So I'm going to go to this sheet that I called Fertilizer Cost Import just to show the process. And in this case, you would, I'm going to have essentially a blank uh, sheet here. I go to File, Import, Identify the file that I'm going to import into Google Sheets. The subtle difference here is when I'm done with this process, I will have a Google Sheet. When I did the other process, I actually had an Excel spreadsheet that I opened with Google Sheets. I hope that's not too complicating, but that's the case. So I'm going to upload a file that I find. It's called FertCalc. Uh, so again, just to recap, I am importing this Excel sheet into this one. And so now it is going to actually become a Google Sheet, not an Excel file. It's going to look the same. This one would work just as fine now on a phone or a tablet in the Sheets app as it does in the browser here in Google Sheets. So again, it's the same view. I won't take the time to completely walk through that, but hopefully uh, you'll just believe me taking a quick glance there that this actually is the same spreadsheet that was in Excel, but is now a Google Sheet. All right, one more thing to do with Google Sheets. All right, so go back to Sheets. Let's suppose I didn't have Excel. I want to start to generate a spreadsheet in this top to bottom, left to right format. So I'm going to start with this file that I called FertCost. Uh, developed in Google Sheets here. So I did save myself a little time and at least pasted in the text. Uh, of course, if I didn't have it elsewhere, I would have taken the time to type it. But maybe you'll recall in Excel, there was this feature of highlighting a whole bunch of rows. And then you could go to the formula ribbon, create names using the left column. You cannot do that in Google Sheets. In Google Sheets, it's much more tedious. It's possible, but it's tedious. So I would highlight the row, and it's under data. It's called Named Ranges. 
and here it's referring to all of row three, and I could now call that under n underscore one. I could go to row four, and I could call that with the named ranges p underscore one. Okay, it works, but it's now going to be a little tedious. Uh, but from this point on, you would do it just as I did in the previous demonstration. Now that you've seen a little bit of this logical spreadsheeting layout, top to bottom, left to right, we just want to introduce you to some other tools that we made available uh, that follow that same sort of structure. And uh, these are links that we'll provide also elsewhere in the post related to this uh, webinar. But there's one called a balance assistant, another one dealing with benchmarking tractor costs, and then a third one regarding cycle analysis. So the ballast assistant is actually kind of a slick little tool where you tell it uh, what is my tractor type, how is the implement mounted, how many horsepower does that tractor have, and how fast am I going. And from it, we'll nicely calculate what is the front axle weight target and what's the rear axle weight target. That is to maximize your tractive efficiency, minimize the slip, essentially. Well, that's part of it, but then the more complicated part is, well, how much weight do I need to add or remove in order, and where should it be added or removed in order to reach those targets? So here is the little spreadsheet tool, and you'll see uh, down here in the bottom right, uh, an area where there's some formulas that are a little bit algebra, a little bit of geometry there, but it's still pretty straightforward. It allows a side-by-side -side scenario of uh, what was it before and what is it after you move some weights. Uh, but it's in the same format where the first column is a variable name, second column is a description, some numbers, some units, and then the formula is completely documented. So we do that in this way so that it's kind of obvious to a user, where do I put the inputs, where are my outputs, and you can easily do the uh, optimally ballast your tractor. This one is a spreadsheet regarding benchmarking of tractor costs. And you'll notice here that it's a side-by-side -side scenario, one and two. So two different tractors you can compute sort of side-by-side. -side. Again, the inputs are gathered all in one place. In this case, quite a lot of uh, uh, intermediate calculations, but then uh, just a, a few number of outputs, including how many dollars per hour if it include fuel, how many dollars per hour if you don't include fuel, and then normalizing that to be a dollars per horsepower hour as well. Uh, so you'll see some slightly more complicated formulas there, but uh, they're really not that bad. And just want to assure you that Excel can handle this for sure, uh, this and much, much more. But still, that same format, top to bottom, left to right, makes it a very useful, usable, readable, understandable spreadsheet. And the last one, uh, really quite a bit. Uh, more complex, and that is to do analysis of what we call a cycle diagram, as pictured there in the top right. Uh, this would be the situation where you have a combine and a grain cart and trucks, or a silage harvester and trucks or wagons and a silo. And so what you have over here in the light, I've just shown the input section to this particular tool, where you describe uh, the machines that you have and sort of the what you're harvesting, has the generic unit of harvest units, and actually this is a metric version of it, apologize for that, but it's uh, harvest units per area, so that you can use the same tool to talk about bushels or tons, either way. Uh, but then you'll see some formulas here in the output section, and the output that you get is essentially what is the capacity of that system with transporters like I have. So it's easy to do what if analysis, what if I have another truck, what if I had bigger trucks, how will that affect the capacity of my system here and what is the utilization like how efficient am i using the machines that i have so just a, a flashback to the first session in this webinar series which was using your smartphones more smartly in that session there was a very brief uh, discussion about google sheets just as a place to put things uh, but if this is new to you that might be a good place to go back to and actually start there but as part of that presentation we did cover sharing privilege controls. So if you're dealing with things in the cloud, such as a Google Sheet, uh, you're going to want to watch that particular webinar to know how to control so that only I have access to it, only the people I trust have access to it, or whatever. But that was covered in the first one. So with that, uh, let's go to some Q&A. We'll take a look at chat, see what questions are posed, and uh, also realize that maybe your question will result in me needing to give another 
uh, brief demonstration, and I'm certainly happy and glad to do that as well.